Right. Let's have a go at this. Just been getting everything set up because this is probably my first live stream on YouTube on my own without Steve. And so I've got a long recording of like 15 minutes of me like getting everything set up. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. Right. I've got a uh, box here from Japan that came uh, came today. Came today, and um, I thought didn't plan this at all. I thought why not live stream it because that will be a bit more fun and have a recording of the fun things that I find inside. Um, so I've got the worst knife ever, some rubbish craft knife, and I'm going to. That's the wrong direction. You're meant to cut away from yourself. That's the safe way of doing it. And uh, I used Bai website to get this. That is not an advert, I'm just telling you. Uh, and they always wrap stuff really carefully, which is pretty awesome. Uh, hi, Retro Theory. It's just you and me. Just you and me. Um, and thanks for checking on the uh, Power Mac 8100 stuff for me. Uh, the Radius 81 110 is here in pieces. Literally, can you see on my desk there? I don't know. It's there in pieces, all over the room. Um, so, and I still don't know why it doesn't get video out of its HPV card, but I suspect I'm going to have to recap it, which is lame. But there you go. Right, here we go. Right, got some airbags, got to have airbags, haven't you? They're quite fun to pop though. Right, just going to go through this one by one. I ordered a bunch of stuff over like weeks and um, I can't remember what I ordered, but I do know there's at least one thing in here that I'm pretty excited about. They've wrapped stuff in, in green paper. That's fun. I've not seen them do this before. Um, I've had about four or five orders from Bayi over the last few years. Ooh, you got a work crew survey to 150, that's fun. Does it have any plastic bezels left on the front, or are they all just broken and fallen off? That is the main issue, isn't it? The nice thing about the radius is that it is just a lump of metal, although the front of mine, the standoffs are all broken, so it doesn't stay on the front anymore. Right, okay. Here's the first thing. This is fun. So this is, let me hold this up to the camera. I need to be able to see what I'm, there we go. That is a, um, that, well, you can see that's the autobiography of Malcolm X. But what is, um, the, the reason this fits into my Macintosh collection is because this is a uh, Voyager company product. And if you look at the top, that explains a bit more. That is a Voyager expanded book and um, for a while at the beginning of the 90s a uh, Voyager p company um, put out um, like popular books and novels on floppy disk so you can see there's the book in there on the floppy disk and there's the sort of interface for reading it and I think the idea was the power books had just launched and they were like oh people could sit on flights I guess and read a book um, on their power book and it wasn't just about reading the book it's it's called an extended book because it has um sorry expanded book because it has like loads of notes and references around it and i already have the alice in wonderland uh one of these um i don't know how common the malcolm x one is um and that reminds me what else i've got in here i think that was about a few pounds um they're pretty rare and i will get that uploaded on macintosh garden when i um when i got some time to archive it I know there's another one of those in here, which I'm even more excited about. But what's next? Got this little parcel. It's like little Christmas. Always exciting. It is. It is my birthday tomorrow, so I guess this is like a little birthday, birthday party for myself. Uh, yes, it's in hypercard. It is in hypercard, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's made in hypercard. Um, obviously, it doesn't say it on here. Yeah, in fact, it says at the bottom of the story about the powerbooks. I was saying designed especially for Macintosh powerbooks. Um, it's, I'm almost certain it's Hypercard though because Voyager did loads of their stuff in Hypercard 
Um, in fact, there's um, at least a couple of Voyager developers on Twitter that I've spoken to in the past who um, talked about how they did everything in HyperCard. Right, where did I put my knife? I put my knife down, there it is. Right, this one needs a knife. I don't know what this is. Um, let's have a look. Hey, it's Steve. Hi, Steve. Well, thanks very much. I'm going to be even older tomorrow. If you thought I was old already, really old. Oh, thanks, Ivan. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, me. FedEx delivered this like a day later than they said, so it's, it's almost like they were thinking of me. Uh, which I think is nice. Steve, I'm really scared doing a live stream without you, but I'm glad you're here. I feel better now. You've given me confidence by being here. <laughs> uh, any tips appreciated? Right, let's have a look at what this is. Oh yeah, right, okay. Right, this um, belies one of my other interests that I haven't really ever talked about on the internet. But um, absolutely, I, I, when I was a kid, I was a bit obsessed with helicopters. And this is a really meant to be a very good helicopter simulator for the Mac. Um, which, I know I could have downloaded it, but I like having the manual and everything. So this is Hind. Hind. Uh, anyone who doesn't know, it's a sort of... Uh, Soviet helicopter from the 1970s um, which is yeah there's, I, could, I could talk for hours about it probably as long as I could talk about Max 4 anyway it's quite a good simulator apparently and um, I haven't been able to find this anywhere um, and of course one popped up in Japan so I was like right I have that thanks very much I would like it boxed but that's just life and it means a bit more sp takes up less space if it doesn't have a box that's the problem I've got with all this stuff behind me um, uh, Steve, that is not Laserdisc related, but it is the same Voyager company. So they did, they did Laserdisc stuff, they did CD-ROM stuff, they did floppy disk stuff. Um, and this is like typical of the floppy disk stuff. And I've got, uh, somewhere back there, I've got an Alice in Wonderland one. And you'll see what else is in, in here, which I'm very excited about. In fact, Steve, you might even know about it already, actually. I think I might have shared it with you on our private back channel. Um, That's how you can tell I'm one of the cool YouTubers, because I've got a private back channel to Steve. It's not even a Discord server, that's how exclusive it is. Right, this is... Um, so I have a... You can't really see it, it's here. It's a bit sad. Back here I've got a uh, workgroup server 9150, because I like all the weird Macs more than the normal ones. Um, and it is a weird Mac. And. Um, Recently in the UK, I managed to get all the manuals and some of the software for it, which is really exciting, but I just never had the installer. And this is kind of dumb because it's, it's, it's the Japanese installer, but it is for the 9150. So that's nice. Um, and it's got the funky, th these graphics were all for the, um, uh, all for the, like Apple share products and some of the work group servers got it as well. These sort of, these sort of, I don't know, sort of 3D pie charty thing. Somehow it represents a network work group. I don't know, but it's on lots of software so, uh, as well, and um, it's just nice to get the installer for the 9150, even if it's probably all in Japanese. So not great for someone who doesn't read Japanese. There we go. Yeah, retro theory. I actually had two 9150s at one point. I had a 9150 120, and I had a 9150. I, and I got a 91, the original one, which is just called a 9150, but it's the 80 MHz. And I, um, I actually swapped the 9150-120 with another collector so I could get my radius. Um, so I felt like they were sort of equal, equally rare and um, I was more interested in having a radius clone because I've sort of always been after one. I like the weird wavy front, even if it's just a bit of molded plastic. Uh, Steve, I will be archiving it. This, I'll be archiving this. I'll be archiving this, and I don't know if this is on the internet already, but this is the thing I was super excited about. This is Jurassic Park on floppy disk. Um, and this is from before the film came out, uh, I believe, because otherwise it would probably have the tie-in film image and stuff. Um, so yeah, this is another Voyager expanded book. And uh, there's the floppy disk with it on. Um, and I am very excited about having this because this is one of those things, I mean, this looks like no one's ever used it. It's like perfect condition. Um, I love this little pixel art dinosaur on the back as well. How good is that? 
really good. Um, yeah, so it's before. It doesn't even. I don't think it mentions the film at all. Yeah, no reference to the film. I think it's either the same year or year or two before. Oh yeah, it's from nineteen uh, nineteen ninety one. So it's two years before the film. So yeah, and um, so with Voyager's expanded books, you can instantly access every occurrence of any word. So I can see how many word, times the word dinosaur appears, or Unix. Uh, add margin comments and end notes. Uh, um, I'm just imagining going through the book and being like, oh yes, this is a very interesting passage. Uh, locate any word or phrase in the text and in your notes. Highlight text and mark pages in three different ways. Doesn't tell me what the three ways are, but that's very exciting. Um, Voyager's edition lets you enjoy this tale of high technology in a fittingly high-tech way on your computer. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about um, these two, and if they're not on Macintosh Garden, they will be in the next week or two. Um, yep, it's super interesting, Ivan. I love all the Voyager stuff. They did some really interesting things, Voyager. Um, I, am, I am having to strongly resist the urge to go back there and grab all the things that are related and tell you all about them. Uh, yeah. Steve, like, got to do a documentary about Voyager stuff on Mac. And all the weird multimedia stuff. I have so much weird multimedia stuff, and I know you do too. All the like authoring kits and stuff, and Voyager did some of those, and Voyager actually helped Apple with some of them as well. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the fax comment. I'm sure quite a few of my Macs could do faxing. I must have a fa I must have fax cable or something. Uh, I definitely I never collect modems. Steve, have you collected modems? I bet you'd collect modems. You like anything that's loud? Goes alongside um uh, dot matrix printers, two things that I never want and that you love, loud, loud, things that make loud noises. I'm like, get rid of the scuzzy hard disk, it's too loud. Get rid of the fans. I've got an image writer somewhere, but that's because I couldn't turn it down because it came with a very cheap original Mac and I was like, I'll have that. Right, here we go, we've got, these are fun, so I've got loads of these already, I've got a bunch of these. This is, um, these are really cool. Let me show you this up close. If you see at the top, it says Macin Macintosh Software Library 5 or something. Basically, this company, uh, Shosha or something. Can you see there? SE Shosha. I don't know if it's going to focus. Anyway, they um, did all these collections of like, um, I think it's mostly shareware or maybe nearly all shareware. And um, some of them were like all games, some of them utilities, some of them were fonts. And this is called the Graphic and Sound Collection. And they'd have these funky covers. And then um, you have a list of all the software on the back. I've actually, um, me and, an, and a collector in Japan have actually archived most of these already. I think they're all on archive.org. Um, and then, so then inside you get these two little volumes. And the first let me get them out. So one of the little volumes is like this little case here and inside are the two floppy disks with the stuff on. Really nicely presented all of this, so nicely done. There's a little sticker there to seal it. And then the other part is a book and this tells you all about the software and the really cool thing about this is it's not just like, I mean it's all in Japanese so again I can't read it, but um, the really cool thing is about these is they often, so they'll have like screenshots and like how to use software and a bit about it and blah 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 um, but it also has like who it's published by and the address and where to like send your registration fee um, but let me see if I can find this I wonder if this one has it in the games one they have a really neat feature uh, this one gonna have it does it have it it looks like this one might not have it yeah, this one doesn't have it, that's a shame. In the games one, they actually have like little bios or interviews with all the authors and tell you a bit about them. So I'm pretty sure I've got one that's got um, uh, Glyphor or something in it and I think it has a little bit about like, you know, John Calhoun and all that kind of stuff. So they're really, but they're really cute little collections because it isn't like the kind of shareware collections that maybe we, well, I grew up with where it's just like loads of stuff rammed on a disc. It's like really nice to be presented and they tell you loads about every single thing and it just feels like really special and I've got like a whole set of these. I haven't got all of them but I've got about seven or eight I think now. Um, what have we got here? What's going on? 
Steve, always up for a live stream with you. Let's totally do it. Yep. Make another hyper talking episode about this company. I could totally do it. Totally do that. I've got loads of rubbish all around here about Voyager. So the really interesting thing about Voyager is they became Criterion, who are the people who do the um, fancy pants film releases. So they'll take like a cult film, remaster it, and then do a like nice, nicely packaged release. Um, and basically that bit of the business started to do better than the, all the computer stuff. And so they basically just ditched all the computer stuff and just became Criterion and just did the film stuff. But for a while they were sort of trying to do both. Um, yeah. And there's actually a Voyager CD-ROM that I really want to get, which is called the Criterion Collection. And it's basically loads of film clips and stuff about films and stuff like that. Um, I would love to get that. That would be awesome. I have a lot of Voyager CD-ROMs. Oh, hi there, all things DG. Hello. Oh no, Steve, do not send me a modem. Do not. Oh, Steve, my smack a mac came. Look, I have smack too. How cute is that? It's got a little keyboard. And the keyboard, the power button there actually said, I don't know if you can see, it says panic on it, <laughs> which is really good. But yeah, look, it's got all the ports I'm, I'm going to need. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, what are those ports? Never seen on a Mac ever. Anyway, I'll, I'll give it a smack later when I get frustrated. Um, right, okay, what's in this parcel? Ah, oh, cool, right, okay. Right, right, right. Remember we opened Hind about two minutes ago. Actually, it was probably five minutes ago because I talked so much. This is uh, by the same people, and I'm pretty sure it's all the same like rendering engine and everything like that, but it's the sort of generation before. And this is the game they made before it. This is called Apache. Um, it's nicely boxed. This is the Japanese version because again, like I've only ever found like a CD and a sleeve on its own, never boxed and never with the manual. And <laughs> I guess I won't be able to read this manual, but I like having manuals for games. Uh, so yeah, there's Apache. And so I've got those. I actually have, I, it's a bit ridiculous. I don't know if you can see back here, there's two boxes which are Hind and Apache, but they're the PC ones. But that's how desperate I was to play them. I was like, maybe I'll be able to run it on my, uh, on an emulator or something. But there you go. Oh no, Steve. Yeah, we are twins. Don't, 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 don't. Right, okay, I've got two, I've got two things left. This thing with this amazingly cute, like, pink sticker on it. And I've got this big thing here. Uh, which do you want me to open first? Brown or white? I'm going to wait until someone sends a message and tells me what to do. Until then, I'm going to get rid of this massive box that's on this desk. This is my fun wheelie desk, which I can wheel around the office. Office? I don't know what this is. It's not an office, is it? It's a sort of room of crap. Which one am I opening? Which one am I opening? Do you like my song? Worked on that for at least a few seconds in my brain. Brown. Big one. Okay, that's two votes for this brown big one. Right, okay. Wait, the brown one is the big one, right? Brown! Okay, two votes for brown, right. Oh no, there's a white! Ah! Who's one? I think it's got to be the brown one, isn't it? It's got to be the brown. Um, right. No, wheelie desk. Wheelie. Wheelie! I've actually, I've put the brakes on the wheels because otherwise this would be sliding around all over the place. Um, yes, it's a desk just for eating hot dogs at, Steve. Could we sort that out? Could we get a desk just for eating hot dogs at? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? That might be, that might be something you have in America, right? I bet you have those. You probably have a desk for eating hot dogs at and a desk for eating donuts at. It's all our desk go with you guys. Right. <laughs> This was a bit of a late night, stupid purchase, okay? <laughs> Not very exciting. Uh, this is one of those things where like, there's an auction and you're like, oh, there's just loads of that thing and I might use that. Uh, but they look cool. Oh, hi Yuli. Hello, Yuli Witness. 
and you have an owl. I like that. That makes me think of the the German for owl is Yuhu, not Yuli. So maybe there's no connection there. Yeah. No wheelie bins in the US. Yeah, they don't have wheelie bins, do they? Just got massive dumpsters. Right, look at these silly discs. Surprisingly, it is cheaper now to buy floppy discs uh, from Japan than it is in the UK. I mean, maybe that isn't surprising at all. Anyway, this is a Super RD Ultra, which obviously means it's the best floppy disk there is. Look at that, it's Macintosh formatted. Uh, they look like they're white inside. And I got... <laughs> I got a few. There's some more. Oh dear. And uh, here are some other ones. What are these? These are those were Maxell. These are TDK. And they're in a cool plastic box. There's 20 there. Um, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Why have I bought loads of floppy disks? Now I'm going to have to do one of these things where people release an album on floppy disk. There we go. Another one. They are pretty, aren't they, Steve? I mean, come on, look. I know it was lame. They were really cheap. I think I paid about five or ten pounds and I got uh, 70 floppy disks that are all unformatted. And the thing is, right, I've got floppy disks that I keep, that I use that are like, um, actually, I've got one box, no, two boxes of ten that I haven't ever used, but I keep finding that even uh, new old stock floppy disks are really unreliable. And um, now and again, I just need one. So I thought I'd get a little stock. You can still buy floppy disks, but not from shops. Just from random people that for some reason have loads of floppy disks around. I mean, these are still sealed. It's bonkers. So, yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be a cat. I'm really sorry. It is a cat, isn't it? It's like, I think it's the size of the eyes. Uh, yep, yeah, this is by Bye. bye. What a great name. Um, yeah, this is from Bae. I think I bought I bought from Bae about four, four or five times. The last thing that came from Bae was my Pioneer Macintosh clone, which I have done almost nothing with because I have no time. Um, but it is awesome. And it's basically, uh, if you don't know about it, it is called, let me remind myself, it's the MPC GX1. They did about five different clones. Some of them were really similar. And that is basically a PowerMax 6166. Um, but with like a really beefy sound system in the bottom and they basically had the AV card in by default but you could buy a DOS version that was 80 megahertz called the 80 Ultra and I almost snagged one of them on by recently and probably for the best that I didn't um, it was very 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 yellow um, um, but I've got loads of sales materials for all the Pioneer clones and they're super interesting um, Oh, hello, LMNO. Hello. Hello. What's going to happen is I'm on the last parcel and then all the, f all the all everyone will turn up and I'll be like, what are we going to do now? We might have to come up with ideas for fun, but also I'm going to have to go to bed soon. Now, this was only meant to be a quickie, I'm opening a parcel, let's look inside together thing. But I also have had some other recent arri arrivals and we can have a quick look at those as well. That might be fun if people are up for it. I want to see some other crap that I've bought on the internet, uh, from the internet. Oh mate, yeah, all things DJ, yeah. They do such an amazing job of wrapping stuff up. It really is like having a little, I mean, having a little extra birthday or Christmas. Right, this one is in a in a New Balance shopping bag for some reason. Ugh. Right, I, I know what this is and this is the thing that I paid the most money for and I'm not going to share how much I paid because it was too much. It was too much, but I'm excited. This is an interesting, weird little um, side note. In in this is sort of right at the end of the new bus era, and we're like, well, it's not at the end of the new bus era. What do you, this is an item from the very much the PCI era, but somehow um, somehow um, got released as a new bus card as well. So basically, this is my version. It is the Sonnet Sonata Pro Twenty Four New Bus Video Card. There's the little installation guide and this is actually the Mac Picasso Mac Village Tronic Mac Picasso 340 but it's like um, basically with the sonnet name on it and this is actually the Village Tronic Mac Picasso 540 PCI card but basically new bus version um, and it is weird and interesting because it has um, 
because it drives ludicrously high resolution screens and it's pretty it's pretty fast it's not fast fast oh no i'm gonna have to recap this Ugh. um oh it looks like someone no no it needs recapping um it's got really crappy electrolyte electrolytic ones um but it's interesting it's got um you know you don't get very many new bus um video cards that have um a vga port on them uh, in fact i don't know of any um and if you look here it is sold it was sold as a sonnet sonata pro 24 but if you look here it just says village tronic picasso 340 and you'll see it's from 1997 uh, if you can can you see that not very good lighting sorry and is it even in focus the label's here uh, there it is. Anyway, um, so uh, that is a very good video card, um, and I have no idea what it's going to go in. I just wanted it. I wanted a really nice video card because I'm greedy, um, and um, it's got really crappy electrolytic caps on it. But yeah, so that is a thing. That's the last thing that I got. I'm excited. I am excited. Excited. But um, I've been doing a lot of research into the first Power Max recently and basically um, reading all about the hardware systems and basically like there were no accelerated new bus video card was faster than Power Max, um, the first generations of Power Max with an HPV card in. So it's basically you should just use the HPV card, basically, is what I read. Um, I've been reading a book all about PowerPC when it came out. It's very technical and super interesting. Um, so what is other weird shit that I got recently? Sorry, I just swore. Um, let's have a look. Some other crap over here. Right, there's some silly things. I'm just assuming that you want to see more crap. I hope that's okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, well this is the most recent thing. Oh, and I could show, uh, oh yeah, and I could show something else recent that's pretty weird. But like, that's quite fun. Right, I'm going to do these two things and then, then it's my bedtime, I reckon, unless anyone's got any requests. It's a Mac display connector and VGA, yes. And it's a new bus card from 1997, yes. It is very late, yes. <laughs> oh my god, VGA to DVI, DVI to HMI. <laughs> Okay, maybe I should try that. That's really good. Um, right. In case you're wondering if I enjoy collecting um, rubbish old uh, multimedia stuff, this is uh, this. <laughs> I couldn't resist this. It was like a couple of pounds. This is Microsoft Music Central '97, and I, I just love Microsoft stuff when it's like only for Mac as well. That's always fun from the '90s when like really it wasn't a reason to publish for the Mac at all. And this is like bit of a lame, it's your interactive one-stop music source. The best thing is this weird, I don't know if you would see, but there's a hologram on the side, which is a sort of anti-piracy thing. And it's like, a, it's a child by a computer monitor and there's something really, really creepy about it. Can I, can I get that to show up? Oh, can you see the kid's face? It's like a toddler and a computer and it's just really creepy. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then, and basically it's just like, uh, it's like encyclopedia stuff about follow your favourite performers. I don't know, I mean, you're not really following them because it's, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, and go on tour with the stars. Enjoy guided tours from leading performers who provide artist's eye view of different music styles. Little Richard takes you to the roots of rock and roll. Uh, discover music's many styles. Find the music you want quickly and easy. And, um, and then also you can connect online for music information and news. Uh, it's the most comprehensive multimedia guide to modern music available. Monthly updates, uh, details of more than 80,000 different albums, uh, and then over 5,000 artist portraits, video excerpts, and audio clips. I mean, look at that. Look at that great video there. You could be watching videos that are, I mean, that is only slightly bigger than my thumbnail. But that would be great. Those clips are going to be great fun to watch, aren't they? So yeah, I got that recently, I was a couple of pounds, I couldn't resist it, as part of all the multimedia crap. And then sort of the other end of the scale of awesomeness, this is Astro Chase 3D, which is a game I've never played, but look at this box. It has a pyramid inside. How good is that? 
How good is this box? Right, look, let me take the lid off and then you'll see. Look. So basically, take the lid off, and that's got the kind of the game name on it, game title. Do, 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 do. Wow. And then here is the pyramid inside. How good is that? So, I will play this game. I think it's okay. I used to have a um, Mac Play or Mac Soft collection that had it in, but I gave um, it was like a collection of a whole bunch of Mac Soft or Mac Play games, and I gave it to another collector, um, and they promised they would archive it. That was the exchange. Um, yeah, how cool is this box? So yeah, there we go. Meaning only children still software. <laughs> is it Masonic? Uh, good question. Is it Masonic? Uh, it's not listed in the features as being Masonic. Um, proprietary technology, thundering digital sound effects, non-stop action and relentless enemy craft make Astro Chase 3D a must-have for your Mac. It's mouse controlled for quick manoeuvring. It fills your entire screen with action on any size monitor from 12 to 21 inches. There you go. Oh, and it's got spectacular photorealistic 3D graphics. The 3D graphics make me think of um, like Maelstrom and games of that era. This is oh yeah, it's Mac Play, so it would have been a Mac Play collection. Uh, is that a Hawk Wire Yo? I don't think so, but maybe it's quite hard. I haven't managed to track down like all of um, his studio's work. I know there's that book that LGR reviewed uh, that, of course, there was only like what was it, a hundred copies or five hundred copies of that book. So of course, I don't have one. Um, but I don't remember seeing it when he leafed through that book. Um, but if it isn't by him, it's got to be influenced by him, right? Surely. Um, I've got a bunch of his stuff here, because I've got... Um, I don't mean, like, what, like, were the marathon boxes by him, right? I've got the marathon ones, um, but I've got... I've got all my weird boxes. Spector. Spector VR. And Spectre Supreme. There we go, got them. They're awesome. And then, like, this box is just so cool with the sort of weird bit sticking out, the little triangle sticking at the top. And that's a lot like the Astro Chase 3D, isn't it? With the pyramid on it. Wow, these are dusty. I should probably do something about that. Um, and I've got um, both the Prince of Persia ones. I've got a couple of Marathon ones. I think those are all my weird boxes. Um, I wish there was more Mac weird boxes, boxes stuff. I would love Comanche for Mac because that comes in a weird um, Hockwai Yo box and it is a helicopter game. So that would tick off quite a lot of awesomeness points for me. But there you go. So that's all my rubbish from Japan and some other things. Um, I think that's it. Does anyone want to see anything that I've got here? Or should I go to bed? I should probably go to bed, shouldn't I? Steve, is this how you do a live stream? Am I doing it right? I'm doing a lot of looking down at this monitor and talking about going to bed. Is that what I'm meant to do? <laughs> I wish the chat was quicker. I'm just sitting here waiting for Steve to say something. What's he doing? He's on his phone. He's Maybe he's lying on a sofa. What could he be doing? Do a trick! Good question. I've got a little table, haven't I? It does look like... I had some cards here. I don't really have anything else, but I do have this other weird thing that came with me. Look, I'll show you this and then I'm going to go. This is on a bit of plastic because the feet are all melting and it's disgusting. Um, I don't know how familiar you are all with what rubber feet, what happens to rubber feet, but it's pretty gross. This is a Bizarro um, item that I got recently and you'll notice that it has fun Macintosh style um, industrial design. This is called an Eastway MP. It's by a French company. Uh, called Transware and um, this is a really fun thing that is basically a um, Ethernet to local talk bridge um, so you can see on the back it's got a AAUI Ethernet port and three local talks and basically you go and you plug it in and then you can configure it with software from your Mac um, and set up like Apple talk zones and all sorts of other gubbins and then yeah it just um, it means you can have an Ethernet network with a bunch of local talk connected Macs or printers uh, and vice versa. So I'm going to use that to route 
I'm like I've got this dream which is never going to come to reality, which is like having some Macs set up and networked for games like Bolo or Marathon or whatever, and um, I might use this part of that network. But at the moment, there is the best part of a Radius 81110, there's a Apple Vision 1710 AV display, and a PowerBook 2400 all in parts spread around. It's quite Steve, Steve-esque. Sorry Steve, I'm insulting you loads, but it is a bit Steve-esque having stuff spread around, isn't it? I feel like I'm being really mean to Steve today. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be really cool for a Raspberry Pi. Um, yes, don't do it Steve's way, I'll be out for hours. I need to go to bed. Um, I want to see anything Hypercard, Supercard, Hyper Studio you have. Okay, right. Let's do Hypercard and Studio stuff, and then I really, really will go to bed. Um, I have a whole section for that. I'm going to put Spectre back. There you go, Spectre. You can go back on that shelf. Um, this is the hypercard section over here. I don't know if you can hear me still. Um, so, I will show you something that is not hypercard, um, but is related, strongly related, and interesting. Fun, interesting things that are strongly related to hypercard, but are not hypercard. Right. Here we go. If I was like a proper YouTuber, I would have like scripted this and done all sorts of stuff. Um, it's okay, I still love you. Haha. <laughs> um, you nearly bought that. Oh, what? The Etherway. It's fun. I played with it already. Uh, I haven't done much with it, but I have played with it. It's good fun. Right. So, um... This is Supercard. Some of you may know what this is. This is ma this was made by um, Silicon Beach Software, who oh let's put it up here. Um, who are the people who made Super Paint, which is basically my favourite painting software. It's this painting software I had when I was a kid. They got bought by Aldus, but they also um, published Dark Castle, which everyone has heard of. And what else did they do? They did well. They did a whole bunch of stuff. They um, um, they also did. I think I've got some games. Other games by them, which I now can't remember what they are. Anyway, so Supercard basically came out after Hypercard, very much like trying to be like Hypercard but better. Um, and it had things like colour, which Hypercard didn't have and never had. The only way you could get colour into Hypercard was sort of special external commands, or you could like it could open a picked file sort of inside Hypercard, but not. My sister and I actually made a board game in Hypercard when we were like, I don't know, 12 or 13. Um, where like the board, it was called Hyperboard, haha, <laughs> how clever. It, the board, it was like snakes and ladders-y type thing, and the board had like buttons on it, and then, so you roll a dice that was a hypercard dice, and it like bounced along the screen, and then you moved like counters along, and if you landed on a board square that had, that was like clickable and had like a thing you had to do, then it then opened up an external color picked resource. Um, but um, otherwise it was black and white. So yeah, this is Supercard. I have still never used Supercard. I really, really want to try it out. Um, I think it's a bit easier to kind of turn stuff into applications, like not like you can, because with Hypercard you could make a standalone stack, but it basically compiled Hypercard into a and and your stack into one blob of application that was really lumpy and big. I don't know what um, Supercard applications are like, um, but you, yeah, you can do a bunch more in Supercard, and I really want to compare the two one day. Um, so that's after Hypercard, but before Hypercard, there was a thing that did hypertext on the Mac, if you can believe it. And um, it was actually made in the UK, actually in Edinburgh, this called Guide by OWL, which stands for Office Workstations Limited. There's their pretty cool, oh, there's their pretty cool OWL logo. Can you see it's like an OWL fly swooping down? Um, and um, yeah, this came out in 1986, so that is a year before Hypercard. They were really cheesed off when Hypercard came out because Hypercard was basically being given away for free with Macs or like sold for like fifty dollars, um, and their whole thing was like make an expert system, help people like learn how to um, do their jobs better and like, sort of like make training stuff and things like that. Expert systems was a big idea in the eighties, um, and yeah, it's already nicely packaged. I have not tried this out yet, um, but yeah, Guide is. Super interesting. That is another thing I really, really want to try out. Um, 
got various letters from the publisher in here, I think. Here we go. Someone has registered it. This was bought by a professor at the University of Loughborough. Uh, they bought it in the Leicester Computer Centre. That probably does not exist anymore. And so yeah, that was Guide version 1 and that came out before Hypercard, like I said, a year before. And then I've got version 2! Uh, version 2 came out two years after Hypercard and um, they were basically trying to work out how to differentiate themselves. <coughs> But yeah, you can. It, they focus mainly on like structuring documents, and um, it really was more of hypertext than hypercard is, because hypercard sort of makes it sound like they have hypertext. Like hypercard, you can't click on, you can't make links like on a web page. Um, you can't make a piece of text clickable unless you like put a button over it. But it's not like embedded in the text. So um, whereas actually, I think with guide, it's much more like a web page where you, I think you could have, say, this piece of text is a reference to this other thing over here. Hypercard was much more graphical and free-flowing than that. So yeah, those those are those things. And then this is another thing that's got nothing to do with Hypercard, but I think is super interesting and reminds me of Hypercard, which is a thing called um, Prototyper. And this is a really cool thing from, I think it's the late 80s as well. It mentions the 2FX as the highest end computer. So probably 89 then this is from. Um, and basically you could build, it says here on the front, this basically explains the whole thing. <clears throat> the Macintosh user interface builder with code generators for your favorite C and Pascal compilers. So basically, you can see on the screenshot on the back, you would build, oh, sorry, it's very reflecty because it's still inside its shrink wrap. But basically, you would build an interface and then you could like simulate an application. It wasn't like a real application, but it's sort of, it was all clickable, like clickable prototype. And then you could press a button and it generated all the code out of it and all the hooks into the finder and quick draw and everything like that. And then you put it into your compiler, which might be like, like it lists these here, like think C, <coughs> Macintosh program or workshop, shop, think Pascal, etc., and use it with like ResEdit and stuff. And basically you could design a whole application in this, output the code and then kind of put in the other hooks to the system and stuff like that under it. But the idea was that you could basically make an app, but graphically with that. That was quite fun. University of Lovecraft. Loughborough. Loughborough. Um, cool. Right. Yes, closest HC to hypertext was a group text style there. with 2.0, yeah. And even that wasn't good enough. <coughs> so yeah, Hypercard and the web is sort of very different. There's a quote from, um, well, I can't think of the exact quote, but basically... Bill Atkinson, who created Hypercard, is quoted as saying he felt he slightly regretted um, the way that Hypercard was when he saw the web come out, come out, like come into existence, because he realised that because he was at a company like Apple that thought about like everything existing inside the computer, like a sort of the world was inside the computer in this contained box, and he he said something like if he'd worked at somewhere like Sun where they thought about things as networks rather than individual computers, that he probably would have made something that was a lot more like the web than like Hypercard. Hypercard really is its own self-contained thing. Like everyone, everything happens inside your computer. Although the cool thing is you can like actually connect Hypercard stacks in two different on two different computers to one another and send stuff between them. You can actually build a messaging app in Hypercard without any special external commands or anything. You can build a chat app if you wanted between two computers in Hypercard, which is something I've yet to do, but I would love to play with doing that because um, Hypercard can like basically send ex events externally to the Macintosh operating system and it can send them across Apple Talk and all that stuff. So one, maybe one day I'll do that, probably not. Um, cool, right. Thanks for joining me for opening my box of stuff. Um, I want to do more live streams and I want to like show off my little room of stuff. Um, I, ages and ages ago I said I'd do like a tour of this because this building only got built like last October, so it's only like nine months old, and I moved all my collection into it, and I said to some people, I'm going to show you around, and then I never did. So um, I want to do that. That might be a live stream too, because it's really hard for me to find the time to kind of organise and script things. Um, so I'll just do my usual witchery style. And um, and yeah. Um, but in the meantime, like, follow me on the twits, and follow me on here, and I'm on Instagram too. It's all at hypertalking. And at some point, I'll do a show about my wrist back.
which I'm also very excited about having. That was the other thing that arrived recently, and I should have shown it to you, but I'm going to go to bed now because it's half nine. Um, so anyway, catch you all later. Oh, hi, Ron, and I'm going. Bye, Ron. You have